What's up, everyone? Thomas here with For Real Movie News and Reviews, and we are currently in the middle of covering hot dogs. And so I figured this would be a good opportunity to hop on, on the video and, uh, and talk about it a little bit. Um, I am excited to currently have on the line Taylor Baker from Drink in the Movies, who is also covering hot dogs. And uh, yeah, I just want to cover some of the things that we've watched and talk about the festival so far, you know, as we normally do when these festival things happen. So Taylor, welcome to the video. And uh, how are you doing this morning? Thanks for having me. I'm good. We had a, a good time doing um some stuff up north yesterday um for a birthday nice. get together for me i think we're both still perhaps recuperating for that um but i'm doing bit. well <laughs> <laughs> yes which reminds me because i'm awful at doing this happy birthday thank you um yes you're uh it's uh officially tomorrow but i'm imagining you're just using this as a birthday weekend yes that's exactly what's happening um even though today is mainly just recording and catch up day I am actually shocked you are as you're at least acting as sober as you are right now. Oh, I'm 100% sober as I hold this, the, what could be coffee. <laughs> it could be coffee, it could be Kahlua, it could be Bailey's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Well, um, yes, so I, that was kind of fun being able to get out and, uh, and hang out for a bit. But uh, yeah, today is also a, a big uh, a content day for me as well because I've seen a bunch of movies that I'm excited about writing about and I've started a few of my reviews, but ready to start publishing stuff. So, uh, yeah, let's jump into it. What, uh, what movies have you seen so far at, uh, hot dogs? Um, what movies have I seen specifically at hot dogs? So the thing is that we were doing some coverage on Atlanta film festival as well. And I'm getting confused about which documentaries are which, but I'm pretty sure that I've seen seven from hot dogs right now. Um, so there's Audible, which we'll probably talk about the most today. Then there's Dark Blossom, which is, um, I believe, a, a Danish film. Um, follows the lives of three kids as they become adults and kind of separate. Bank Job, which was very bad. Um, the Big Scary S Word, also not very good. Uh, Rockfield, which was about um, a recording studio in wales um and they have a, a very storied career very very interesting documentary um any given day which is my favorite documentary of the film festival so far and then also nike's big bet which i think you might have also seen um and that that's actually a very very interesting documentary yeah that's it quite the comprehensive list i'm uh i'm sad to hear you didn't like bank job i have it listed here on my uh on my interests list um mm. but uh yeah I um i i watched it because one of one of our writers um she was interested in it and i i piqued my interest so i popped it on and i do not like it it's very surface level um it's a it's a critique of a bunch of different things with the financial system but it doesn't actually um go in depth on anything at all mm -hmm. very surface yeah, I level guess I suppose there's a lot that you can go into with the with the uh, financial industry, but that is too bad. Uh, was it? A, did it have any entertainment value to it? Or they blew up a van, but oh. that's ten <laughs> seconds of you know, yeah, no, no. It's very Fair hard enough. for me to uh, to endorse something that's supposed to be a critique but doesn't actually offer criticism. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm interested. So going into hot dogs, what, what were your expectations for the festival? What were you looking for uh, in the selection of films? I was expecting to find probably the, the best last batch of documentaries that I'll see this year. Um, I think Sundance undoubtedly had my favorite collection of documentaries. South by Southwest was also incredibly strong for documentary film content. So I was expecting this to kind of be the last big hurrah um, of, of really good documentary films that we'll hear about for the next two years as they slowly stagger their release. Because VIF, TIFF, Telluride, um, you know, I don't think that we're really going to hear about earth shattering documentaries. There might be one or two that are great, but a, a big smorgasbord like this, I just don't think we're going to see another one this year. 
Well, it is interesting how these, uh, you know, these big film festivals that premiere uh, a lot of the movies that end up going into uh, the main, the, <laughs> that end up going into the mainstream. Um, and, and this of these um, films that are at these film festivals, the strongest ones are documentaries. It makes me wonder kind of what the landscape is going to be for narrative film uh going forward because i do see what you're saying i think uh, sundance had a solid selection of of documentaries it actually had my favorite documentary of the year so far which is flea um that's the wrong answer out, mm, i know you have other preferences <laughs> you meant to say all light everywhere it's all, all right. light everywhere yes i guess i misprint i must have mispronounced it um which of course is uh is a selection at Hot here Hot Talks, well. yeah canadian so, debut i think you have a whole nother opportunity to watch it. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've gotten uh, gotten to that uh, second watch just yet, but um, but yeah, so solid selections in in documentaries. Um, so yeah, I guess on a different topic, it'll be interesting to see what um, going forward the narrative uh, selections will be for the rest of the year. It just seems like this last year was more um, conducive to making documentaries. Um, mm -hmm. So. So, yeah, um, but also, you know, a lot of documentaries, they're on like six year time horizons. So mm -hmm. really right. COVID out of all filmmaking, I think, got the least in the way of documentarian filmmakers. In fact, I mean, that I, we've seen films where COVID is either um, the like the topic of documentaries or or kind of developed the how the documentaries unfolded. I'm thinking very specifically about uh, someone like me, which kind of had a trajectory on what the story was at least supposed to be in the direction that the story was supposed to go, and then completely gets upended by um, by uh, COVID and the pandemic and the shutdown. But that just became a part of the story, and that just became a part of how the documentary unfolded. And so you do have that flexibility in storytelling with documentaries to either make major events like that be the topic of the documentary um, or have it influence. Uh, the story in a way that makes the documentary maybe even more interesting than it would have been otherwise. So. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't think that I've seen personally, like really any good documentary that shot during COVID so far. So, mm. um, you, you know, we'll see. It sounds like you're saying the one that you're referencing is good. Someone like me, yeah. I enjoyed. Um, yeah. Okay. I like that one. Uh, particularly because of the uncertainty involved with how the story unfolded, even even besides the pandemic, there was a lot of um, factors that kind of changed what you might have expected from that story. Um, and then the pandemic happened, and and uh, and it it throws another wrench in how things develop. Um, and so that was actually a really good one to have a conversation with the directors on. Uh, it takes place in Vancouver. So there's a lot of familiar scenery uh, when, when they're following these people around. And um, actually uh, Beaumont had the opportunity to watch it as well. And so he, he it also resonated well with him because a lot of, uh, he says there are parts of the movie that take place right in, uh, in his neighborhood. So oh, cool. Um, so yeah, it's nice to see that local film um, and 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 see how that story um, is put together and how it unfolds in the pandemic and everything. So I did enjoy it. I would recommend it. Um, and my interview for that one is published now, so we can go watch that. Um, but yeah, I guess going into hot docs, you know, I'm I always set really high expectations, and uh, and you know, I'm kind of looking for another flea. Um, I'm looking for another, you know, like really compelling story driven um, narrative that that approaches documentaries in a, in a unique way or approaches the story in a unique way. Um, and so that's what I'm looking for. I'm still on the hunt. I've seen mm -hmm. good things, um, but uh, we'll, we'll see if, uh, if another flea shows up for me, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that when I'm I don't think I'm specifically looking for like harrowing narrative documentary subject style thing. I think I'm, I'm just looking for the next thing that makes um, the cinematic language, you know, do something to me. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, Sabaya was, was crazy at Sundance just because you're watching, um, you know, a family of refugees essentially living on the land going and rescuing sex slaves in the back of pickup trucks from 
you know, kind of warlords. And it's just, it's fucking terrifying. All light everywhere. Also very, very interesting in a very different way. Um, last year, my favorite um, documentary of the year was My Mexican Bretzel. It literally is a silent film with um, like images that are from her family and a narrative that she wrote that has nothing to do with reality. But you're watching these things and reading these things and they feel true. So I'm just looking for the next thing that really pops me. Mm-hmm. Uh, if what you mean to say is you're looking forward to seeing All Light Everywhere again. <laughs> <laughs> I might be. <laughs> well, uh, I guess the things that I've seen so far include Nike's Big Bet, um, which is, is, is very interesting. Um, Did you like it? I, I liked it. Um, I think that I was hoping for a little bit more depth on the corporate side of it. Like I, I, I would have really liked to see um, more insight as to what, like the decision makers, because it talks a lot about the decisions made um, by Nike. But um, it would, it would have. I guess I kind of ha- was hoping that we would get some insight inside of Nike. Um, it doesn't quite go there, but I do think that what it does present is a really compelling argument about the lengths Nike will go uh, to, you know, be the best. Um, and I think we're in an era of sports right now where that is, well, there's a question about that um, and a question about how to handle that, uh, where people are pushing themselves more and more to be better and, you know, are uh, to be better athletically and, you know, are looking to bend the rules in, in order to make that happen and sometimes even just blatantly break them. Um, so, so yeah, it, 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 I think that it presents that thesis in a really interesting way and it covers a lot of big profile Nike moments um, uh, throughout the history of the company and really puts a big question mark on like, how are we supposed to feel about this? I don't think it answers uh, it, like exactly how to go about it, but it does put the question out there. Um, so uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Audible, uh, I think is currently my favorite, uh, my favorite documentary so far. Um, so I was, I was happy to see that one and can't wait to talk more about it. Um, I watched the short film uh, Help Have Gone Viral. Uh, if you really want a song stuck in your head, a really cheesy song stuck in your head for the rest of the day, that one, that one has one. That I don't think I do. Thank you, though. <laughs> for, you know. um, let's see. Seven Years of Lucas Graham uh, I watched. Uh, and maybe I'm just stupid, but I had no idea that English wasn't his first uh, or his primary language. Um, so I was not expecting that to be a foreign foreign language film. Uh, still good nonetheless. I, I enjoyed it. Um, Mao, uh, I watched, which mm-hmm. I liked, um, particularly for the subject matter because I am a graphic designer. So that spoke a lot to me. Um, I watched, uh, of course, someone like me. Dead Man Switch was interesting. Uh, I like mystery documentaries and so, uh, or just mystery and in, in storytelling in general. So that one was pretty interesting. Um, and then I, I watched um, uh, this one called Acts of Love that I didn't like. I was going to uh, say that introduction's really not glowing. No. <laughs> I uh, watched uh, this. Uh... <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, you know, maybe I'll, I'll talk more about that later. Um, I, I don't know what I, I don't think I was expecting anything from it, but I don't know if it was expecting anything from it. Uh, so uh, maybe that was the problem large compliments Um, yeah (laughs) yeah it's unfortunate but um yeah so which other one so far has stood out to you that you've seen that you really that you really enjoyed or or maybe you want to tell people about well let me cheat and i'll talk about two first i want to counteract your nike comments I, I, th- I think the documentary starts about <laughs> about 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it starts in the late 60s. Um, mm-hmm. And so I don't know who we would go to for the answers you want because we're on such a large time horizon. Um, mm-hmm. I understand the interest, though. It would be interesting to to get those internal documents and memos and stuff. But I think that the most interesting thing is the title of the film, The Big Bet for Nike. Mm-hmm. 
and then the the footage and how they show us that their first big bet was Prefontaine and Prefontaine died. And then they had to pivot and they pivoted to this guy, Salazar. And uh, Salazar was great for them. He won a lot. And then their bet on Salazar turned into a different bet. They bet on him as a coach and they'd known mm-hmm. him almost his entire career. And now in this arc, he's he's you know, being sued or he's, he's under allegations from uh, WADA and I think USADA. And, you know, we've seen in recent memory, um, USADA and WADA be incorrect about things. Um, Most notably John Jones, um, where he tested positive and then they got a better test. And he basically tested for, you know, you drop one little um, droplet of pure water into like a glass of salt water that's like how much he had in him it was incidental and it could have come from from a source that wasn't purposeful so it it is interesting to just see um it framed like that um so i i do i really respect the the filmmakers for how they present it and specifically because they don't give us an answer and we get like seven minutes of malcolm gladwell talking which doesn't hurt (laughs) (laughs) of course um <clears throat> so I will quickly pivot onto my actual favorite documentary so far, and that is Any Given Day. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, this is a mental health documentary. Um, I went into it with no expectations at all. Um, it's the sophomore documentary film from Margaret Byrne. Um, and she's following three individuals in Chicago through something called the mental health court, where basically they exit jail. And instead of going to a halfway house, normal um procedure with parole they become part of something called the mental health court where there is a special judge this is what she does and they build the program they they get them assistance in a way specifically for people with mental health issues um i don't want to give too much away about how it ends but i will say that in the middle of the film the documentarian herself has a psychotic break and it is one of the most interesting and personal films that I've seen all year because of, you know, know, she's making these people her subject and then she's going through almost worse than what they're going through at this point in time. Um, So I'd really encourage everyone to watch it. It's very, very interesting. I think beautiful, thoughtful, and, um, you know, just heartfelt and sincere in those really important ways. Yeah, I think uh, I, I have that one now on my interest list, thanks to your recommendation. Um, Beaumont's also interested in watching it. I think he actually uh, has access to it now, so he uh, he's good. going to check that out. And uh, yeah, I think that'll be an interesting one f- to cover um, if we do a, a post-festival uh, yep. video. That would be a fun one to uh, to for us all to discuss. So unless you guys disagree, um, then it's going to be sad. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe but that is that is to be seen tune yeah. in next time um, um <laughs> one that i that i need to get to that you've already seen is street gang i think you saw it at sundance yeah i did um, i saw that one at so sundance. that's yeah. that's one of the main ones that i want to make sure i see before we we exit the hot docs lineup yeah absolutely uh street gang um it's just uh it, it's feel good uh, and it's nostalgic, um, but it's also very informational uh, and really gives a whole different perspective uh, of that behind the scenes kind of situation um, with the production of, of that show. And, and it's so, I guess when I think about shows like that, uh, like, like Sesame Street, um, you know, it, it, particularly when I was young and watching it for the first time, it just seemed like a, a program that they put together are are we lying to people you mean yesterday when you were watching sesame street oh yes (laughs) (laughs) hey hey that is a very educational program maybe i can still enjoy it as a as an adult um but uh yeah they it it's the amount of thought and effort and intentionality put into making sure that 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 program was educational and beneficial and not just you know, uh, mindless, uh, uh, you know, inter- a TV entertainment, but to transform TV entertainment into an educational experience. I, mm-hmm. I you know, I have so much respect for that. Um, and I think the documentary captures that for us. So I'd strongly recommend it. That is another one that was, that's like really high on my uh, favorite documentaries of the year um, so far. So yeah, definitely. I strongly recommend it. Get to that one before this, uh, this festival's over. I will. I will. (laughs) 
Um, what else is on your uh, on your to see list? On my to see list. Yeah. What well, else do you need to get to before the end of the festival? There's all sorts of things. I'm thinking that I want to do Dead Man Switch as well. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, another film that I saw, but I literally forgot that I saw because it's so bad, is The Face of Anonymous. Um, oh. it's this terrible documentary where they follow, um, commander X. It's like this, this guy who used to sell LSD at grateful dead shows. And he, he like imagines himself to be more important for anonymous than he is, but like he tricks like all of CNN and MSNBC into believing it for like a long period of time. Um, so he just becomes that important, but he actually has nothing to do with like the logistics side of what they did operations wise. Um, <laughs> and it's just like this guy and his ego for two hours. And I just, oh, it's one of the worst documentaries That's I saw. At the festival. I, have, <laughs> I have to go back and because I get the face of anonymous and faceless mixed up. Um, Faceless is and... different than the face of anonymous. Faceless, yes, yes, I, get... I believe is foreign language. Yes, yes, yes. I, I get the difference, but I, I, I have, I requested both of them. Yes. Um, I think at the same time, and I think maybe just face and the name both make me, yep, have me confusing them because I, I'm pretty. I started faceless, um, okay. but I have not. I did not. Uh, I've not finished it yet, so I, I do need to do that. Um, but yeah, okay. Uh, anything else on your, on your interest list? Um, there is a few, um, there's something called the, um, edge of chaos. Um, additionally, there's Ostrov. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that one. Um, not. let's see. The last film that I requested was the last shelter. So okay. that's that's the last one that I remember requesting. That was Friday. It's it's been a long long weekend. <laughs> I'm sure it has. Yes, of course. And uh, with you celebrating and merriment and all of that stuff, I'm sure that it's made everything a blur. <laughs> yes, you were there. Um, mm -hmm. I, the um, the Danish film Dark Blossom, though, I I would actually recommend that. Um, yeah it's it's a very weird thing because you you're kind of watching it and it's it's a very novice filmmaking style you don't really understand what you're getting into but the way that it's edited um really sells it because it's over the period of like i think three or four years so you're watching these kids get their first tattoos lying to their moms on the phone about where they are and then you're seeing them live in the city for the first time alone um going out of country like to pursue their dreams it's it's very very interesting because of the time scale um so I, I would recommend it it's it's not a great documentary but i think it's a good one and it's it's one of the more interesting um that i've seen i, I haven't seen any documentary like it this year nice i actually just requested that not too long ago they um i think the publicist has sent me like three emails i got three or four different like uh, uh publicist emails about that one and so after like the third one i said okay fine oh I'll, I'll right. check it out so so i have i have access to it i'll i will uh i will check it out once i when i get the opportunity um the there's a few that i have on my um interest list um a few we, we mentioned like i still kind of want to watch the bank job um go for it I know, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm hesitating now. Um, I also, I wanna see um, Only I Can Hear. Um, I think that um, uh, like hearing disabilities is, is such a strong theme uh, mm -hmm. at film festivals this year. And I don't know if that's how it is every year and I'm just now jumping in on no, it. No, but... no, this is the this is the first one, right? Because Sound of Metal was up for, for an Oscar. Mm -hmm. Coda sold for all that money. Right. Aud audibles you know a pretty big mm -hmm. release um soon for netflix i think in the next netflix uh, it's in july july yeah. I, I think is is that release so so yeah that that's a topic that's that's becoming more and more prevalent in in film this year it seems yep. um even in mainstream film we talked before about you know godzilla bringing a, a deaf character in and, and making that an essential part of the storyline so um True. Yeah, so I, I want to see that. I, I actually am really enjoying um, these stories uh, and these and these people and characters, and so I want to see what that one's about. Um, Specifically, uh, the sound design is what's 
weirdly right. incredible in these films. Yeah, like the irony. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. So that one, uh, Dirty Tricks is another one that's uh, that I'm that I'm interested in. Uh, again, it kind of has a mystery element to it. It seems from the synopsis. Um, okay. So going for that, uh, and another one that is kind of mystery oriented is Portrayal. Um, it's a, a film. Of, it's an art uh, oriented film um about uh, uh i guess this guy who's trying to learn about the, something with his family and and art pieces that his father did or something like that so um there's yeah okay. there's a, another mystery aspect to it and i don't know i'm just i gravitate towards these these mystery uh storylines and and i think that those are very interesting to uh you know to check out so yeah it's hard to yeah. do that as a documentary as well um should hard, we get yeah. to a little bit of uh of audible before we we part oh, oh that's right yes 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 let's talk about audible um you, you start what, what were your your thoughts on audible <clears throat> um well i i mean there's a ton of different thoughts number one i guess just the story is so eloquently edited together um the the build-up of the center of that team writing that friend's name on your hands tape showing it at the end of the film um the the way that that ends up kind of defining everything and becoming the value source for everyone in there um is really really interesting but also the the cinematography i think i mentioned to you there's this one shot where they're under the water um and he's training and um that's he really does that for training that wasn't staged he just mm -hmm. went in with the camera and and shot some um and it's just one of it's just one of those quick little images but it's, it's beautiful looking they've got great sideline cinematography um it's it's got elements of you know football to it in the beginning and the end um the pacing is, is really well done why don't you chime in <laughs> yeah no everything you everything you're saying is exactly uh you know what i was thinking as i was watching it this is a gorgeous film to watch this is a beautiful beautiful cinematography um and I think that they, um, you know, identify the right characters to to tell stories about um, and give background on. Um, it's actually it's it's an interesting experience because it a lot of it is silent since the the um, the uh, most of the subjects are deaf. Um, so it's very odd when someone actually talks. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um so that was that's interesting but it's all it's it, it is it is uh what like 30 35 minutes almost 40 minutes something like 39 that. 39 um yeah so it's it's short and, and part of me kind of wishes it was a, a feature length film i think that that would have been i i could have sat through that for a whole hour and a half i i i think that he really boiled it down to its essence and mm -hmm. i mean how lucky could you like if you shot this one year earlier one year later you don't mm -hmm. get the same storylines you don't right. get the same star with amari amari right. is a, a very unique person in that he's he's like their their prom king but he's also nice to every single person like it it's one of those weird um, like really genuinely good people um, that you get to have as your subject. Um, and then his story with his father is equally interesting. Um, there's, there's so many wrinkles to, to that person's life. And we just have this, this moment where they have their, you know, it opens up on their first loss mm -hmm. and um, that loss, that sense of having lost really just permeates the entire film. And um the ending, I think, is just such a crescendo. It pulls off, you know, what we would be criticizing it for not doing if it was longer, I think. Mm -hmm. That might be true. I mean, who's to say, like, what, what it would be if it was uh, if it was a feature length? But I, Me, I, just, think, I just did. <laughs> I just, I think there are certain technical aspects of a, of a film that, um, that really kind of win me over and in this one mm -hmm. the visuals and the, the cinematography was just so great like I could have uh you know I, I I would have personally been okay with it being you know an hour hour 15 hour 20 um but but it's good as it is and again you, I think we've talked before about how short films are starting to enter the mainstream more um and, and I think that's great you know with this going to Netflix like that's a mm -hmm. huge platform that a lot of people are going to be able to experience it. I can already like see, see the trending today and seeing it at number one 
uh, on Netflix because it's I, I just think that it's going to get a lot well, of what's buzz. interesting is if I remember correctly they commissioned this film oh did they yeah I, it's possible I, believe so. I, I mean that would make sense um yeah that's awesome uh and and the fact that they made it a short film it didn't feel <laughs> the the need to extend it uh yep. you know just to be a feature-length film because that's what's traditional yeah. uh you know there's there is so much that 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 you can appreciate about this production um and i i honestly can't wait until it gets to netflix i'm i'm excited about the reception and, and like i said particularly with the subject of um deaf subjects and characters um being so prevalent in films now um that you know that this is going to come out coda i think is coming out in in august um and coming off of so that's apple tv right i i believe so okay um, you know, and all this coming off of Sound of Metal's, uh, you know, Academy Award win. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's, it's really cool to kind of see that, that uh, in, in cinema. So, yeah. And um, I'll do, I'll do a Thomas style shameless plug. You'll oh, be able to hear my interview with uh, Matthew Oggins, the director of Audible soon. <laughs> I am so jealous uh, that you have, uh, that you had that interview. So, Lucky, lucky. It's great you. to talk to. I will be, I'll be sharing that as soon as, uh, as soon as it's published. So, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. Um, so, any what other... are, what are you gonna watch today? Oh, we're gonna turn so this today? off. You're gonna get to watching some documentaries. What are you getting to today? I am. Hold on. Uh, I just um, was just looking at this. So today I will be watching. Um, I think I want to finish Faceless. Um, I. I do want to watch Portrayal, um, and I guess only I could hear would be a good one to watch today too. Um, I might I might watch Bang Job. You know what? Maybe I'll put Bang Job on. Um, that's possible. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. Like I I don't ever like unless there's a schedule that I have to follow. I just kind of like whimsically decide you know what yep. am i in the mood for do i do i want a mystery okay. do i want to kind of you know to have it on while i do something else do, do i do i have do i want a nap energy do i want a nap <laughs> do i have the energy to read subtitles i don't know like it just it really depends on my mood and maybe how much i drink <laughs> <laughs> so but i do expect to get you know hopefully like two or three movies in uh today and i also want to get some uh some reviews written and published this week so yeah. Cool. Uh, do you, what is what's on your list today? My list is, I mean, documentary wise, the only thing that I know I'm going to see is probably Street Gang. I've got to watch mm -hmm. Fritz Lang's The Big Heat here when we hop off this. I'm going right okay. into a recording for uh, for drinking the movies. We're rescreening awesome. Fritz Lang's The Big Heat. I need to watch that one more time before we record, and then I'll do Street Gang later tonight, and I'll probably just mosey around and and pick something just like you're talking about just what do i want to watch <laughs> what do i feel like uh yeah. are you doing anything for your birthday tomorrow i know you're already um, up this weekend but nope i'm working jujitsu and then i'll be home at like nine <laughs> well i would like to personally welcome you to the 30s club oh thank you uh, <laughs> it's a wonderful club it's to a be pleasure in. to so be here i uh wasn't invited but i'm here now and um <laughs> i'll be kicked out in 10 years <laughs> yes that's exactly how it goes. This is this is the fun club where you start feeling the aches and pains, uh, mm -hmm. as I started realizing. So, yay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, uh, Taylor, uh, all this content you're going to start publishing, where can people find it online? It's at Drink in the Movie on Twitter. Everywhere else, it's Drink in the Movies, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Go to drinkinthemovies.com and you can find it all there. Yeah, perfect. Um, Taylor Beaumont uh, was not able to join us for this, but he is definitely putting out content and watching films so you can read his stuff and my stuff at moviesforreal.net. Um, we'll be covering hot docs all week um, and probably into next week as well. And maybe even the week after that, depends on how much we get around to seeing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, moviesforreal.net and also connect with us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at moviesforreal. I am on Twitter and Instagram at bts. 